Let me say good morning to all the viewers and uh, listeners. Uh, this is Mr. Benoit Badwell, CEO of the Dominica ANC Ports Authority. And this morning, I'm going to provide you with an update on the ports of entry after Hurricane Maria. As you all well know, that uh, the ports of entry throughout uh, Dominica suffered tremendous damage. And what I'm going to do with you this morning is to try to give you an update um, and then give you the various ports of entry and what is happening thus far. To begin with, I will talk of the Rosal Ferry Terminal. The Rosal Ferry Terminal was severely damaged as a result of Hurricane Maria on September 18th, 2017, and further it suffered damage from river flooding uh, that occurred in the city of Rosal. As a result of the damages to the ferry terminal, the ferry operations were transferred immediately thereafter to the Woodridge Bay port. And this was done under difficult circumstances because the Woodridge Bay port itself suffered damage. But in an effort to assist the traveling public and for the many persons who wanted to um, go out or exit from uh, Dominica at the time, for various reasons, temporary conditions were established to move passengers through the facility at Woodbridge Bay. Given the dangerous exposure to heavy equipment and cargo, a decision was taken to rehabilitate the ferry terminal to allow for a better reception for incoming and outgoing passengers. A tremendous effort was made by a number of agencies all in an effort to bring service back to the Rosal Ferry Terminal. The Ministry of Public Works and Ports dealt with the removal of debris from the roads in, proxim in close proximity to the Rosal Ferry Terminal. The Ministry of Tourism and Urban Renewal utilized their work crew and helped DASPA staff to undertake cleaning of the debris from the facility. The Jamaica Defense Force, under the command of Colonel Ogilvie, and the Trinidad and Tobago Coast Guard all played a vital role in enabling the return of services to the Rosa Ferry Terminal. On Friday, October 13, 2017, passenger services were transferred to the Rosa Ferry Terminal in conditions that were far, more, far superior to what was offered at the Woodbridge Bay Port. Let me thank all those who contributed in one way or the other to make the transfer of the passenger operation back to the ferry terminal a reality. We're still grappling with some challenges at the ferry terminal um, in that we're trying to uh, ensure that if the ferry is late, for example, that we can provide some level of electricity um, services there. Uh, as you know, we don't have Dumlek, but we're running off uh, a generator. And so we want to implore on your patience, but we are in fact striving to ensure that we can provide um, a better service as we go. As it relates to the Woodbridge Bay port, the Woodbridge Bay port suffered heavy damage to its transit sheds, and 85% of the roofing was lost due to Hurricane Maria on September 18th. The administration office and maintenance compound was extensively damaged. The main wharf, however, did not suffer much damage along with the fendering system that, and that it assisted us in being able to dock the container and other vessels, bringing relief and medical supplies to Dominica. Within six days after Hurricane Maria, on September 18, 2017, we worked one of the container vessels, uh, Tropic Carib, on September 20, 23rd, uh, 12 containers were landed, three 40-foot units, and 20 20 foot units. To date, we have worked seven commercial vessels. On Monday, October 9th, we have loaded 102 container units from the MV Arian, a CMA CGM container vessel. Clearly, that points to a normalization of commercial activity at the Woodbridge Bay port. To date, we have discharged 73 20 container units, um, 70 40 
foot container units, 611 pole, pieces of uh, poles uh, for the telecommunication and the electricity company, 107 pieces of telecommunication equipment, and 13 cell sites were brought in. The message to all is that the Woodbridge Bay port is open for commercial traffic, despite the setbacks as a result of the damages to the transit sheds and other areas. Container and stuffing for barriers, boxes, pallets, cartons of personal effects are being undertaken as we speak. Not at the same pace as was done before Hurricane Maria, but being done to try to ensure that persons can receive the barrels and boxes sent by their families and friends. The delays experienced by some of the vessels are regrettable, but because of the limited buffing space and the fact that the ships were not able to work at night due to the damages suffered to the open lighting during the passage of Hurricane Maria. However, we are in fact taking a remedial action in terms of ensuring that we have portable lights so that we can begin the process of working ships at night. And we're also making arrangements for the dock workers and the other persons who will be employed past the time for the curfew so that they would not, um, in, we were going to talk with the police to ensure that they can be given the necessary um, pass to be able to work ships at night because that is hampering our ability to be able to um, move ships at a faster pace. So if we can do some work at night, uh, that will help in terms of the turnaround time for the ships. So port workers are to be guided by that the necessary arrangements will be made to allow for them to work late at night at the port as a result of cursory restrictions. So we will go around with the police, um, we will speak with the police to ensure that they can operate at nights without any difficulty. The importers and consignees are encouraged to call their shipping agents, their brokers, to make arrangements to clear cargo at the port. Because we do have cargo that came in prior to Hurricane Maria sitting at the port. There are many motor vehicles sitting at the port occupying valuable space. And we are encouraging those consignees and importers to clear these vehicles that are still awaiting delivery or clearance at the port. And we are saying that those vehicles especially so, we're encouraging the owners to clear their consignments. Because as they clear the consignments, we can now uh, allow for the vehicle carriers to bring in the other vehicles that they have. Because we've been advised that um, we have vehicle carriers um, putting off vehicles in other ports. And what we would like to do is to ensure that we can bring those vehicles so that those persons who have imported their vehicles can receive them. And so we're making every effort now to try to see how we can accommodate that facility. But you would have understood that in the early days after Hurricane Maria, the, the emphasis was on food supplies, medical supplies, and ensuring that you know, we can actually deal with those um, issues up front. But now, a few weeks after, we're again settling to bring normal operations back to the Woodbridge Bay port. The quicker the consignees clear their cargo at the port, the quicker and better we'll be able to receive and dispatch cargo at the Woodbridge Bay port. We've been having discussions with the customs authorities and we have agreed on a weekly basis to meet with the senior management of customs so that we can deal with any bottlenecks or any, any problems or challenges that come up um, as the working week goes. So we will try to see how we can smooth things out in terms of operations so that persons can quickly move uh, their cargo out of the port. Clearly, uh, the, 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 the the port operates based on government directives and as it relates to applicable charges on goods to be cleared at the port, there will be no tailgates, FAS charges and jetty rates to be levied on any relief cargo consigned to the government of Dominica, charitable organizations, be they approved 
or the non-approved, that is, um, there are certain organizations um, that will uh, qualify under that banner. And we, we also have organizations like the Red Cross, Rotary Club, uh, there are some church organizations, and there are some medical um, and, um, associations that would be classified under those um, organizations. So there will be no fees in terms of being levied against those persons because of the fact that we would like to ensure that the relief um, effort is not hampered in any way, shape, or form. However, commercial cargo, all charges uh, would continue to be applicable as customary for commercial uh, cargo. So I want to make that clear. For commercial cargo, all the charges that would apply before a Hurricane Maria would apply after Hurricane Maria. So there are no changes in that respect. For the families and friends who send boxes and barrels, um, no tailgate fees and FAS charges um, are to be levied. And clearly, it is a period in which uh, persons would want to assist their families and friends um, to be able to bring ourselves um, as we recover um, quicker back to a sense of normalcy. And so that's um, based on the policy directives. Uh, we're clearly uh, charting that path to ensure that families and friends can continue to send boxes and barrels uh, to their families and so that it can alleviate the pressure that, that, that is currently on them. So in the event of any query, we would like persons to either notify the um, operations manager uh, and the accounts uh, department so that those queries can be dealt with. And if at all, you require to uh, get any um, higher up in, 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 the, in the administration chain, I'm sure uh, my office is open uh, for any queries that you may have. As it relates to the Longhouse Port, that wharf did not suffer any serious structural damage and is being fully utilized to bring in medical supplies, relief, commercial and other cargo to Dominica. The transit sheds, though, were, um, were severely damaged and all cargo entering the state uh, through the Portsmouth Longhouse Port must be cleared on landing. We are, in fact, making arrangements um, to install a temporary shed um, with uh, one of the international agencies, and we are awaiting the importation of that uh, temporary shed so that uh, cargo that uh, can be stored will be stored so that persons wishing to clear the cargo next day or, or a couple of days thereafter can safely have that. But at, at the moment, what we're doing is we, when the ships come and persons pick up their cargo, they clear customs and all the cargo is cleared immediately. The Longhouse Port um, has positively impacted on allowing relief and other cargo to reach the north and other areas in the northeast after Hurricane Maria, especially so when the roads were not easily accessible from Roseau. So, in fact, uh, the, the, the port in the north is doing well um, in terms of the Longhouse Port, and um, we will be trying to see as well how we can improve the lighting at that port because all the light, um, open lighting poles were damaged, and we will try to see how quickly we can restore lighting to that port. Coming to the airports, the Kingfield Airport suffered uh, damage, to, serious damage to the terminal, uh, the air traffic control tower, the maintenance building, and the fire station. With respect to the runway, apron, and taxiway, not much damage was reported, apart from some flooding early uh, the day after the storm, the day of the storm. However, the debris on the runway was quickly cleared up by the airport personnel, fire officers, and the airport was put to use. The airport became a vibrant hub of aircraft activity, allowing all the relief, medical supplies, medical personnel, and other key personnel in the disaster recovery effort to be able to enter Dominica and to move to provide the necessary assistance required. Kinfield served as an important network for helicopters to bring uh, relief supplies to remote areas, airlift uh, medical patients for medical attention, 
and allow persons to exit the country by small aircraft. And as gradually we have normal traffic coming back uh, to St. Thomas, we have weekly flights resuming with coastal and some other private aircrafts going uh, directly. We also have um, the Caribbean helicopters uh, doing flights from Antigua um, on, on a fixed wing aircraft. And so we, we, we are beginning to put a, a normal um, track into uh, having Canefield fully operational in terms of commercial activity. As it relates to the terminal, we are putting some temporary coverage there um, until we uh, address permanently uh, restoring all the coverage that was damaged, the roofing that was damaged during uh, Hurricane Maria. Air traffic control is currently carried out from the ground level, and we are in dire need of communication equipment loss during uh, the hurricane. We are the op at the moment operating with handheld radios and a base radio donated for use by friends within the aviation community. As it relates to Douglas Charles Airport, the Douglas Charles Airport suffered minor damage to its roofing in the air traffic control tower. The runway, taxiway, and apron did not suffer any serious damage, but the fencing suffered damage in a number of areas. The worst hit area was towards the east or the seaside, uh, but that is being repaired as we speak. And we have um, the Eastern Caribbean Civil Aviation Authority has given clearance um, for aircrafts to um, move commercial traffic, and so we have uh, commercial traffic. Seaborne is back on a daily um, flight uh, to Dominica from Puerto Rico. We also have Liat with a um, limited schedule, but daily uh, to Antigua and from, um, to and from Barbados. So that is, in fact, on daily, we have increases. Uh, Air Sunshine is back on uh, with their flight schedule, and we're expecting word from Winia in terms of the flight schedule as they come back. We also have um, the terminal, as you know, had suffered some uh, damage as a result of flooding, but uh, it was, that was quickly addressed by the airport customs, fire, and police personnel, and the contractor on site. And we are in fact pleased that that was done quickly enough to allow normalcy to return to the Douglas Charles Airport. And we are, in fact, doing our best to accommodate uh, the flights as they come, be it relief flights or uh, the normal commercial flights. And so persons um, can utilize both airports uh, for normal activity. And we are continuing to discuss with the airlines ways and means that we can improve um, the f flight scheduling that they have. Uh, one of the things I want to say is that the airport operation is daytime only at the moment at Douglas Charles. We are in fact trying to see how we can uh, bring back the night services, but we have some technical issues which we need to address. And that can only be done after we've had some flight testing done with our lighting system. Uh, it was not damaged, but there is a, a requirement uh, that after any major uh, event like this hurricane, you would need to retest um, all of the equipment. And so we are, in fact, following the advice of the regulators. And so once we get it fully tested, uh, we, we can then make the announcement at a later stage in relation to nighttime uh, flights. The cruise ship berths, both Rosa and Cabrits cruise ship berth, uh, were severely damaged. And much focus has not been placed on them as it relates to repairs. Uh, because we were concentrating on bringing in relief um, and food supplies into the country. But action will begin in the next few weeks to bring them into a state of readiness for um, cruise activity once that starts again. Overall, on behalf of the Board of DASPA, management and staff, let me thank all of the users of the port facility for their continued support despite the difficult circumstances in which we have to operate. We're seeking to improve gradually on the services we offer, and we ask for your patience in dealing with the officers and staff of the authority. Our aim is to serve you better in the public interest, 
by moving on our service delivery, by improving, sorry, on our service delivery and to allow for safe operations at the ports of entry. We request that the ship and aircraft operators provide advanced schedules of the arrival and departure times of their vessel and aircrafts for better planning of the operations at the ports of entry. Importers and consignees are asked to consult, check with the shipping agents for an agent release before proceeding to the port of entry. Because sometimes the confusion starts when persons just come down to the port without having the necessary agent release. You will not be able to clear your, your barrel, your box that your family member have sent to you if you do not have an agent release. That procedure is still in place. You need to go visit the, the shipping agent and get an agent release so that you can begin the process of clearing the barrel, the box, the pallet, or whatever cargo that you will be moving um, out of the port. The Customs and Port Management, again, like I said, will be meeting uh, on a weekly basis to examine ways to facilitate the movement of cargo and passenger traffic. And the, the Customs and Immigration has been cooperating very well with us to ensure we can enable uh, or facilitate the movement of, the, of those processes. Once again, let me say many thanks for your support during this difficult period. Uh, we all have been affected. But with the help and understanding from all, we will help build back better our country, Dominica, for all to enjoy once again. And I want to thank you for listening to me and to take the time off to be able to uh, provide that information. But in closing, I just want to say once again that the ports of entry in Dominica are all open for commercial traffic. The cargo ports, the airports are all open. The only ports that we have not addressed, like I pointed out earlier, is the cruise ship activity, but we have no cruise ship activity at this time. And so that's why we have delayed um, our action on, on these um, areas. But we would want the persons who are viewing at this time or listening to my voice to know that clearly we are not where we should be at the moment in terms of um, normalizing all the operations in terms of being done smoothly, but we would want to ensure that persons are clear that the ports are open for business and that commercial traffic can operate. The shipping companies, we are working with them to try to um, smooth out their schedule and with the airline operators, we're doing our best uh, given all of the circumstances. Once again, thank you.